Okay, now these two stones, these people were not directly involved, but I thought it was worth pointing them out. The grave I'm touching now is that of uh, Timothy Johnson. This is his wife, Catherine. Timothy was 13 at the time of the witch hunt. Catherine was about 10. But uh, Timothy was the son of the Rebecca Johnson I just mentioned, who was one of those accused. And of course, so, and, you know, of course, his sister, also Rebecca Johnson, was one of those who was arrested. But his wife, Catherine, who he married in about 1702, was Catherine Sprague, who was the sister of the Martha Sprague, who was the leading afflicted girl here in town, and of course the, the stepdaughter of Moses Tyler. So this would seem like a sort of Romeo and Juliet, you would think this would be like a Romeo and Juliet match of the uh, witch hunt. But I doubt very seriously that uh, Timothy's uh, sister Rebecca held this marriage against him because she ended up marrying Joseph Ballard Jr., who was the son of the Joseph Ballard who brought the afflicted girls over here from over here from Salem Village and touched off the whole thing here in Andover in the first place. So clearly, you know, within about a decade or so after the whole thing, there were at least some people who were willing to let bygones be bygones. Now, of course, Timothy's sister, mother and sister, both Rebecca Johnson's, neither of them was ever you know, convicted or hanged for witchcraft, so that might have made it a little, e you know, a little easier in their case, you know, to get, you know, to put it behind them. But, you know, there was also a large degree of um, feeling throughout the area, you know, to shove it into the past as quickly as possible. When they were, you know, all these different double names, when somebody was attempting to contact that person, and I said, I want to you know, send a letter or talk to Rebecca Johnson, did the person you're talking to know who you were talking about? I would think you'd probably have to. Of course, you know, chances are, you know, when one was an adult, the other was a child, they would probably assume it was the adult, that, and, you know, unless you said otherwise. Yeah, the but older Rebecca Johnson, for example, you might say, or uh, the younger Re Re Rebecca Johnson, but if you address the letter, would the letter then indicate uh, the, the, the missus, or would you say the, what would you say is would be the title of the younger? Oh, uh, well, you yeah, know, official, I don't know if this would have come out in letters, but you know, even with one thing that was common in that era, which you don't see today, like in the records of the witch, you know, in the records of the witch hunt, is that for mothers and daughters with the same name, they would use the designation senior and junior. You know, I mean, now, you know, you only, in later in times, you usually only saw that for men. Right. But, you know, and that, like throughout the whole, the tri, you know, the examination <laughs> records, you know, the, when there's a mother and daughter involved, they often did say, you know, like Rebecca Johnson Sr. or Rebecca Johnson Jr. Now, I don't know if that was done in letters or not, but, you know, the thing is, da I mean, you know, daughters, you know, us I mean, usually daughters wouldn't leave home until they were married, and then they'd take a different, you know, you have a different name anyway. But, um, and uh, so, you know, it would probably, you know, it would probably get more complicated, you know, with fathers and sons with the same name, or, and then there, you know, you have to be careful in records, too, because, um, you know, even later ones, I mean, the designation senior and junior with, like, men on tax records or what have you didn't automatically mean they were father and son. It would just be to separate the older or the, and the younger one in the same area. Like if you had a grandfather and grandson with the same name, senior and junior might be used, or an uncle and nephew, or even cousins with the same name. You know, the, older, the one who was older would be called senior and the younger would be called junior. And some records. Go arrest Bill Smith. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. <laughs> well, you actually, uh, and well, one thing that's worth that that actually brings up, you know, one interesting angle of this is um, one of the people who was uh, con arrested, convicted, and hanged here was named Mary Parker, and there was another Mary Parker in town. Uh, you know, they were they they were not what happened. They're I mean, both their husbands were, well, her, the one who was hanged, her husband was dead by that time, but he had a brother who was also married to a woman named Mary Parker. 
and in her testimony she intended to claim that uh, well what she she tried to pass it all saying there's another mary parker here in town but you know it, it does seem like i mean i think she was just trying any way to get out because it does because you know the people testifying against her said you know this is she is the one so but uh, but she did attempt to use the fact that there was another mary parker in town who I think in some records, I mean, she, the other Mary Parker was older, and I think some of the records describe records of her describe her as non compos mentis at the time, which means she probably had dementia or something, what we now know to be dementia or something. We're gonna, we're gonna hang the smart Mary Parker, <laughs> not the other one. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, if any, and the next, we're just gonna go into that little triangle across the street there now.